You're listening to the Two Guys Talking Podcast Network. When I was a kid, I remember the first mention of the word Yeti. It was in regard to the Sasquatch, Bigfoot, something that was real. Or was it? Well, in the podcast community, we have something that's very real. It's called the Blue Yeti Microphone. Now, before you pile on in either direction, I got some bad news for you. But first, I'm going to introduce my host, Brian Ensminger, one of the hosts of the Podcast Gauntlet. Hi, I'm Brian. (laughs) And I guess I'll introduce the other host, Mike Wilkerson. (laughs) Wow, man, that's amazing. And notice also that while we've done a different introduction, that different introduction introduces both of us just like our usual program does. Hmm. Brian, I'm sensing a theme with what might be the meat of this episode of the podcast gauntlet. Well, let's continue with that. So the Yeti microphone, it's been around a good long time. It's been used inside of circles for voiceover, for collecting meetings, Uh, for collecting live music, Uh, even have a a good friend of mine that is a professional voiceover artist that is actually using a Blue Yeti. But, but, But Brian, Yetis are terrible. How are all these people accomplishing these things? I mean, I think you start out by using it as a boat anchor and then you move up to paperweight and then you realize that used properly, the Yeti's not a terrible mic. It's not a mic that I would necessarily recommend. I don't think that it's... The, the price justifies the quality that you get out of it, but it, it's usable. It can be used as long as it's used well. The problem that I, that I see most often, and I've seen this recently, is that a lot of people get the microphone because they see the ads and they – don't get me started. Yeah, we'll have to talk about the ads. They see the ads. They see a picture of how somebody is using it wrong in an ad because the person taking photos didn't know how to use it. They don't know anything about the settings. They use it wrong, and it sounds like two tin cans and a string. And then the response overwhelmingly when they say, how do I fix this, is, well, just return the microphone. Because that's the fast, easy answer. The better answer might be, well, let's talk about your recording environment. Let's talk about how you're using the microphone. Do you have it set up properly? Not saying that the ultimate solution might be a different microphone, but it, because it could be. Right, I'm using a condenser microphone. The Yeti is a condenser microphone. It's not the right microphone for every environment, but used well, it can work. I don't know. Back to you, yeah. I guess. Yeah, there's no question. I, I I think one of the things that we have to remember about the Yeti is that, uh, especially when it's being used inaccurately and then showcased, especially depending on the platform, you really have no idea what you're in for. I can remember the first time that I saw the Yeti. It was actually in an infomercial. In an infomercial. Ready for this one? It was two people wearing white lab coats sitting at a table. And each of them had a, a blue Yeti microphone pointed in at, at each of them and fire. And th- that's the we first part of the joke. what that means. Sure. And, and that's where I was going. That okay. End fire essentially means that if you have a microphone, which let's assume this camera is a microphone and you're using it at its end fire, it means that I speak into the end of the microphone and the microphone captures the content, delivers it to whatever your recording device is and all kinds of great things happen. Versus if you were going to speak to the front fire, i.e. the front of whatever the microphone is and not the back or whatever else. But so, end fire, end fire, okay? All right. Let's put the expensive camera down. Please, for those of you watching on video, you're being incredibly entertained. Those in audio land, you'll never know that this was here because of great editing. Okay, so we got the end fire and the front fire, fine. But the Yeti microphones were pointed right at each of the host's mouths which is not how the Yeti works. Better yet, part two of the joke, each of them had a lav mic on their lab coat, which is clearly where all of the sound was being captured because the sound right. was glorious. Yeah. And so the microphones, the blue Yeti microphones were simply put into the picture so that there could be microphones in front of people with white lab coats on. Yeah. 
<laughs> I remember seeing that specifically, and I'm like, man, that's some great sound for the Enfire microphone from the Blue Yeti that is not an Enfire microphone. <laughs> and I mean, like, that's the third tortilla wrapping of the joke is that they were never going to get any sound from those Blue Yetis because they weren't plugged in for one, but two, because they were being used as an Enfire microphone and they are and they are Enfire microphones. So right. again, to go back to Brian's point, which is if they're not used appropriately, you're not going to get great, get good, much less great sound from them. Again, that being said, let's go back to my friend that is a professional voiceover artist and they have a Blue Yeti. They're not still using that because they've made enough money that they can go and grab some uh, uh, upgraded, enhanced gear. I won't say better. Uh, yes, it's better. Uh but they did for a period of time and they were able to pull it off and then make what they needed to via either their software or whatever else they were using to push off the jobs. So checkbox, thumbs up. They were able to start someplace, use it appropriately and push out product that was above the bar of quality needed to do what they needed to inside of the job rack. And so if you can do that and you're getting the sound that you need from the Blue Yeti, awesome. And that's why it's a microphone that's going to work for you. However, if you're going to use it on the flip side of the coin, i.e. the Enfire microphone, or even better yet, one of the one of the benefits or the features of the Blue Yeti microphone is that on the back there is a dial. And the dial is to set the mode of the microphone and i.e. how it's going to be captured, whether it's only from the front microphone or whether it's from the two microphones on each side so you can stick it between two people and get the back and forth of people, or the surround microphone that's available that will essentially capture a reasonably sized room. It won't capture a, a concert hall. It'll capture it, but it'll sound like crap, much like the two doctors in the white lab coats talking into their lab mics that weren't using blue Yeti microphones. So again, it's all about the usage and the environmental settings being appropriate, uh, but more importantly, you understanding what that microphone is going to yield for you, but also what it's not going to yield for you. Right. Brian had mentioned that he's using a condenser microphone also. Brian, which microphone are you using? This is the Lewitt 440 Pure. Okay. And how is that microphone different than, say, the Blue Yeti? Um, many, many things, but... I mean, fundamentally, the way it captures audio is the same, right? It uses a condenser capsule rather than a di dynamic capsule, right? So that's the fundamental thing. There are other things about how it's built and how it, like, I have to use an audio interface. I can't just plug it in by USB. There are some things there. But it is a condenser microphone. I think the, the key piece, though, is, like you've already highlighted, understanding the equipment you have and using it well. And is it okay if I maybe share some of the things that I typically share with a host if they're asking me for a little bit of guidance? So, Absolutely. Go for it. Yeah. So I'm going to share this, these yes. tips, but I want to start by saying that I recognize that sometimes the best microphone is the one that you have, right? So don't let not having everything ideal stop you from starting a podcast. Just always keep your idea, your mind on doing things better. Beyond that, general rule, one microphone per person. I recognize that the Blue Yeti can do conference tables and stuff like that. However, what happens when you do that is you always have a loud talker, that's Mike, and you always have a quiet talker, that's me. And you, <laughs> so when you try and balance those two people, it can be, I don't know if you're actually a loud talker, but that, that can be a challenge. So <laughs> if you can, one microphone per person. Typically, you're going to want a directional microphone. It, in audio world, that's called a cardioid. It's like an upside down heart. And you point that part to you. On the Blue Yeti, that's the side that has the blue logo. You talk to the blue logo side. You make sure it's that upside down heart shaped pattern. And then try and keep the microphone, I would say for a condenser microphone, no more than maybe six, maybe nine inches from your mouth when you're talking. I, I usually like that four to six inch range. I'm about three inches off of mine right now. And what that does is it helps give more of your voice and less of the room because a condenser microphone is designed to capture everything. It's, it's not going to capture from the back, hopefully, if you've said it correctly, but it's designed to capture all those things. Keep it close to your mouth if you have problems with popping peas. Address those, but just keep it there. Don't stick it on a desk two feet away from you in a room that has no acoustic, in a tile bathroom. Let's just pick on the tile bathroom. Don't record in a tile bathroom with it sitting two feet away from your mouth and then wonder why it sounds bad. It's going to sound bad. 
put it in the best environment you have, the quietest, the least reverberant, keep it close to your mouth, heart shape pattern, keep it near you. But then again, recognizing sometimes the microphone you have is the microphone you have. And, you know, sometimes there's a recording that if you miss it, it's worse than waiting for high quality audio. A, a key thing that comes to mind is, you know, if you've got somebody who is ill and you think they might not make it to your next interview opportunity, use the microphone you've got because you may never get that chance again. Yeah, no, no question. There's a gentleman that I just consulted this morning. He's going to be meeting with a 97 year old dude from his fraternity house. The oh, wow. fraternity is having a series of uh, previous uh, fraternity brothers in a series of interviews. And I, I, you know, it's not that maybe he won't be around for another one, but Hey dude, he might not be around for another one, right. <laughs> you know? And so you have to get the sound inside that room. In fact, that what I told them about was uh, not to push gear, but the, the Insta 360, which if you're watching the video presentation over, which you can see right now, if you're only listening by going over to our website at podcastgauntlet.com and clicking appropriately. Um, this camera is what he's going to stick in the middle of the room. But then I also gave him some uh, recording equipment, the Zoom H6 with a microphone. And so he'll be able to do that as well. So he's actually capturing two sources of audio so that if in a pinch, he can only use one that's on the camera. Well, he's got stereo in the middle of a table between he and a 97 year old dude to capture the video and some stereo audio, but then also a couple of microphones that are also going to get really great audio. So either way, you got the you got the safety net, and then you got what we'd really like to have. I want right. to also I also want to tag on to Brian's um, use what you got. It's never been more important to do that. But there's something else that the Blue Yeti provides that is a, a masterwork of marketing. One, uh, a series of things. One, the name of the thing. Uh, seriously, Yeti. Yeah. I mean that's awesome. How, how do you not think, whoa, man, and everybody's imagination reels at the concept of Yeti. Uh, they've used it inside of all of their marketing where it's kind of this um, cartoony version of the, uh, from the the uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer cartoon stop motion movie. Right. Looks just like that. And that preys upon people's nostalgia. So there's actually, there's actually two bits there. The other thing is that the microphone looks good. It's a good looking microphone. You look at it, you go, my God, a microphone. It's not crazy, zany, wait a minute, what's that looking microphone? It is a microphone. You look at it, you go, dude, look at that microphone. The next thing is, it's heavy. It could easily be the next modern implement inside of a clue game. Ah, I think it was Brian Ensminger inside of the podcast studio with the Blue Yeti microphone. I mean, it's heavy, dude. You could kill someone with that thing. And so all of these things, oh, and the uh, the last giant stamp on the butt of the Blue Yeti is you can plug it in via USB into any computer system. Yeah. And so remember, the people at Blue are not stupid people. They're not going to give you ultra crap old microphone even at the price point that it's at. They're going to give you something that when you take the time to put it into the environment that you need to capture the content that you need with the education in place to capture what you want, you're actually going to get something of reasonable quality. I'll bet you didn't think you came here to hear all of that about the Blue Yeti, did you? <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually where we ask you guys, well, what do you think about the Blue Yeti? Let us know what you think by going over to the podcast to pod by going over to podcastgauntlet.com. Fill out the quick web form and let the typed out hatred begin. Until next time, I'm Mike Wilkerson, one of your hosts. And I'm Brian Ensminger, the other one of your hosts. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>